All right, everyone, in this video, we are going to be looking at the ViewPress Tutorial 7, Navbar, Logo, and Links Post. All right. So in this video, we're going to be looking at what is a Navbar. Then we're going to get into the Navbar logo and site title. Then we're going to look at some Navbar links. So we're going to be taking a look at internal links, external links, drop-down menus, drop-down menu subgroups. And then we're going to get into how to disable the nav bar, so how to disable it globally and locally for a specific page on your site. Now, to start with, what is a nav bar? So in this tutorial, we'll be discussing how to configure the nav bar by using the options exposed by the default theme. So a nav bar is used to provide users with a quick and easy way to navigate to the main pages of a site. So most sites display the nav bar on most or all of the pages. So it's generally designed to be a global component, which allows it to be more easily shown on all pages. All right, so the nav bar for a site made with ViewPress can consist of a logo, a site title, a search box, internal links, languages the site can be translated to, and external links. So depending on how you want to configure your nav bar, your site can have all or some of these options. Now we'll be discussing how to configure the logo, site title, internal links, and external links. And like we said, we'll also discuss how to disable the nav bar globally as well as locally for specific pages. All right, so now what you can do is you can take a look at the nav bar in this page to see what we'll be designing for the CodeMonkeys blog. So up here we have our nav bar logo, we have the site title, we have our search box, then we have internal links up here, and then we have a drop down menu, and then right in here we have a drop down menu subgroup. All right, so you can also see another example if you take a look at the ViewPress nav bar as well. So up here you can see the nav bar on the ViewPress site, so right up here. All right, so you can take a look at that as well. Now, a quick note here on using a custom theme. So since the options being used for the nav bar are provided by the default theme, they may be different if you're using a custom theme. All right, so just be aware of that. Now, you wanna make sure that you start the local development server, which should be running at localhost port 8080 to see the changes we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing after you save them, then try restarting your local development server. All right, so you can see over here that I have already started up the local development server. So this is what our site currently looks like. And if you come over here to the code, you can see that I started the local development server down here by running yarn docs colon dev, and it's running at localhost port 8080. And then up here I have the config.js file open. All right, now let's get move on to the navbar logo and site title. All right, so the navbar logo is used to brand your site and it provides a link to the home page. So the image we're going to be using for the nav bar is the CodeMonkey's Head and Shoulders logo. And we're going to be adding the image, which is named CodeMonkey's Head and Shoulders logo, to the CodeMonkey's Logos directory. And the site title in the nav bar also provides a link to the home page, and it's being set by the value of the title property in the config.js file, which we set up in a previous tutorial. All right, so after adding the image, the directory structure for your site should now look something like this. So you have your docs directory, your .viewpress directory, then you have the public directory, the images directory, then the CodeMonkeys logos directory, and then inside of there, we have our full logo from the previous tutorial, and then we have the head and shoulders logo right here. So if we come over to the code, you can see right here that this is the title property that we previously set in the config.js file. And then if I open up a terminal and then you can see here that I'm in the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. I'm in, I am on the tutorial 7 branch. And if we cd into the docs directory and then inside of the .viewpress directory, and then you can see inside here is where our config.js file is and the public directory. And then if we cd into the public directory, we have our images. So we'll cd into images. And then inside of there, we have the CodeMonkeys logos. So then we will cd into that. And then if we list out inside of here, you can see here is the full logo and the CodeMonkey's head and shoulders logo. All right, so we already have this file in the branch right here. All right, so now if the directory structure is confusing you, 
then be sure to take a look at the adding image section from the previous tutorial where it's described in more detail. And that section also contains links to resources for creating, editing, and compressing images and for coming up with color schemes and palettes for your site. All right, so you can take a look at this section from the previous tutorial if you're confused at all about this directory structure about how to add an image. All right, so this is the CodeMonkey's logo right here. And you can download the logo right here from your browser and it will also be in the tutorial seven branch of the CodeMonkey's blog tutorials repository. So right here, you can also come to the tutorial seven branch of the code monkeys blog tutorials repository and you can get the image from here. All right. So after adding the image to the site, we can reference it in the config.js file as follows. So if we come back over here, let me just close this terminal. And then if we come down here, we can type out theme config in the config.js file and what we want to do is we want to say logo and then we want to give it the path to our navbar logo which in this case is going to be slash images and then it's going to be slash code monkeys logos and then it's going to be if we come over here you can see it's going to be code dash monkeys dash head dash and shoulders, and then dash logo dot PNG. All right, so let me format this file and save it. All right, now, assuming we did that correctly, yep, and right over here, you can see that we have the Navbar logo right up here. All right, so notice that we didn't need to include the .viewpress slash public in the path to the navbar logo because whenever you reference assets stored in the public directory, that gets automatically added to the path. All right, so we didn't have to add that up here to the path to the logo. Also notice the value of the site title is being set here by using that title property that we set. And this is what the HTML looks like after adding the navbar logo. So you can see right inside of the body tag, we have this header tag, and then we have an A tag, which then has this image tag, which is the Navbar logo right here. And then we have a span tag, which is the title of the site. All right, so if we come over to this page, if we inspect, and then if we go into the body tag right here, and then inside of the header tag, or inside of this header tag up here, let me just close out this. So then inside of this header tag, then what we are going to have is we're going to have our A tag. And then inside of that, we're going to have the image tag, which is our navbar logo. And then we're going to have a span tag, which is the site title. All right. So that's what the HTML looks like after adding that navbar logo. Now let's move on to navbar links. So to add links to the navbar, other than to the home page, we need to add a nav property to the theme config object. So the nav property expects an array of navbar link objects, and we're going to start by adding internal links. All right, so an internal link is a link that points to another section of the same page or to another page on the same site or domain. Now to add an external link, you need to add this object right here to the nav property where text defines the name of the link in the nav bar and link defines the path to the preferred page. Now for our site, we're going to be, we're going to add the following internal links. So we're going to have topics, posts, resources, and donate. And this is what the config.js file looks like after adding the internal links. All right. So let me come over here. And what we want to do is we want to add that this nav property. So if I just copy this and then if we paste that in here and let's format the file and then we will save it. And you can see right here, we have our nav property right up here. And then we have the text of topics and then a link to the topics page. And then we have our posts text right here and then a link to the post page and then we have resources 
for the text and then a link to the resources page. And then we have the donate text right here and then a path to the donate page. All right, so assuming we did that correctly, yep. So right up here, you can see that we have our internal links right up here to the topics page, the post page, the resources, and to the donate page. All right, so your nav bar should now have the topics, post, resources, and donate links to the right of the search box. And a quick note here is that you're gonna get a 404 when clicking the links. So if you click the links, they will show the 404 layout because we haven't set up the pages for topics, post, resources, and donate yet. In future tutorials though, we'll create these pages which will fix these issues. So if we come over here and we click on one of these links, you're gonna get a 404. All right, now let's move on to external links. So an external link is a link that points to a page outside of the same site or domain. So adding an external link is the same as adding an internal link, except the value provided to the link property is a URL to an external site. Now external links automatically get these attributes right here. So it gets a target attribute, which is equal to this underscore blank value. And then it gets a rel attribute with values of no opener and no refer. So these attributes will get added to the a tag and the target attribute specifies where to open the link document and the rel attribute specifies the relationship between the current document and the link document. Now, these attributes are used to prevent a vulnerability known as reverse tab napping. So here's a little uh, link to that if you're interested in learning more. And this can happen when a user clicks on an external link. So all major browsers have fixed this vulnerability but you can still include these attributes in case a user is using a browser without the security update. Now, you can also customize the values for the target and rel attributes by specifying them as properties in the external link. So you can disable the rel attribute for a link by setting it like this. So if you did rel colon false, that would disable the rel attribute for a specific external link. Now, here is an example. So for example, we could add an external link to the CodeMonkeys blog repository on our site with custom values for target and rel. So here's what the config.js file looks like after adding the external link. So if we come down here, we have the adding the external link example right here. So if we scroll down, you can see here is an example. So if we come down here, and we just copy this code over here. And then what we wanna do is we wanna paste this in right there. And then let me format this file and save it. So you can see that we're giving it a text of GitHub, and then we give it a link to the CodeMonkeys blog repository right here. And then we give it a target with this underscore self value. And then we give it this rel attribute right here, and we give it a value of false. Now, if you come over here, let's just open this up. So you can see right here that we have this GitHub link right up here. And if we click on this, it will bring us to the CodeMonkeys blog repository. All right, so that would be an external link. All right, so this is what the HTML is gonna look like after adding the external link. So if we come over here, so you can see that inside of the body tag and then inside of this header tag, then we have our div tag right here with a class of links. And then what we have is this nav link, this nav tag right here. And then you can see that we have all of these div tags right here, which are tags to our different nav items. So these are these external links right up here. And then you can see that we have this div tag right here. And inside of there is an A tag to our external link. All right. So if we come over here and then if we go inside of the header tag and then we just close this out. And then if we go inside of this div tag with a class of links and then inside of there, you can see that we have our search box and then we have our nav tag. And then inside of this is all of 
our different nav items. So these are for the internal link. So here's the one for topics right there. And then this last div tag down here, this is our external link. So this a tag right here, and then you can see that it has um, the value of GitHub right here. All right, so that's what the HTML looks like on the page. All right, so now let's get into drop down menus. So the links in the nav bar can also be drop down menus if an items property, which expects an array of nav bar link objects, is used instead of just a link property. All right, so for example, the post link we made earlier can be turned into a drop down menu containing links to pages for all posts and for posts by topic. So here's what the config.js file looks like after turning the post link into a drop down menu. All right, so if we come over here and let's go up to our post object right here, and then what we want to do is we want to remove this link right here. So we'll take that out, and then we want to add in this items. So if we come over here and we paste this in, and let's format the file and then we will save. And then you can see over here that we have the items and then inside of there we have text with the value of all posts and then a link to the post page. And then we also have the text by topic with a link to the topics page. All right, so if we come over here to the website, you can see that we have our posts link right up here, which now has a drop down menu with all posts and then by topic. All right. So this is what the HTML looks like after adding a drop down menu. So you can see that inside of the header tag with the class of nav bar. Then if we go down to the nav tag, you can see that we have inside of this div tag right here for in this div tag right here corresponds to the the post link then you can see that we have this div tag with a class of drop down wrapper and then inside of there we have a button tag and this has span tag with the post right there and then it also has a span tag with a class of arrow down and then we have another button tag and that also has the value of post right there and and this right here this button is for the mobile drop down so this would be for a uh, mobile display and this is for larger displays and then right down here you have that span tag with the class of arrow right and then we have this ul tag with a class of nav drop down and then we have an li tag and then inside of here we have a pass to the post page and then it says all posts and then we have another li tag with the class of drop down item and then that has an a tag with a path to the topics page and then that has this by topic value right there all right so we came over here and if we close out of that and if we go over to our div right here and then if we go over to the nav tag then you can see for our second div right here, which corresponds to that post right up there, you can see that we have this div tag right here, with the class of drop down wrapper, and then we have the button. So this will be the button right here um, for the post on larger screens. And then this will be the button for the post on mobile screens. And inside of there, we have this UL tag with the class of nav drop down. And then this has an LI tag the class of drop down item and then this has the a tag with that post path and then it says all posts right there and then down here we have this li tag the class of drop down item and then this has that topics path and then it says by topic so that corresponds to this all posts right here and then this by topic right there in our drop down menu all right so your nav bar should now have a post drop down menu containing all posts and by topic links. All right, so now let's take a look at drop down menu subgroups. 
All right, so it's also possible to make a drop down menu with subgroups where a label is used to group a list of links. So this is done by using the items property, which expects an array of navbar link objects instead of using just a link property for a drop down menu entry. So for example, the by topic link we made earlier can be turned into a subgroup containing links to posts filtered by main topics. So currently the blog consists of three main topics. So we have leak code, Node.js, and ViewPress. So we'll add each of these as an entry to the by topic subgroup in our dropdown menu. And this is what the config.js file is going to look like after turning the by topic link in the dropdown menu into a subgroup. All right, so if we come over here to the code, what we want to do is we want to add this right here. So instead of that, what we want to do and what we want to do right here is we want to add this. So I will just copy this, paste this in, and then I will format this and then save it. So right here, you can see that we have a text of by topic. And then we have this items right here, which takes this array. And then we have a text for leak code, which is one of the topics, and then a link to topic slash leak code. And then we have text, which is for Node.js, which is another topic. And then that has a path of topics, Node.js. And then we have the text view press, which has a link of topics view press. All right, so that is how you would set that subgroup in the dropdown menu. All right, so this is the final config.js file right here. So this is how the config.js file should look at the end of this tutorial if you're following along with the building of the blog. All right, so we're going to get into disabling the navbar, um, but this is how it's going to look at the end now without this external link right here. So if we remove this external link, this is what it will look like for the blog because the blog currently doesn't have an external link. So we're not including an external link. All right. So this is what the config.js file is going to look like at the end of this tutorial. All right. So let's take a look at the HTML. So this is the HTML after adding a subgroup to the dropdown menu. So if we come over here, then you can see inside of that div tag that has a class of dropdown wrapper. And then we have our two button tags right here. And then we have that UL tag with the class of nav dropdown. And then we have this LI tag. And this is with the path of post for all posts right here. And now we have this li tag with the class of dropdown item. And it has this h4 tag that says by topic. And then it has a ul tag, the class of dropdown sub item wrapper with an li tag to this dropdown sub item with an a tag to the topics leak code path right here. And then this will have the value of leak code. And then we have another li tag with the topics Node.js path with the Node.js value right there, and then another li tag to the topics ViewPress page, which has the value of ViewPress. All right, so you can see that over here. If you come over here and you're inside of the body tag, and then we want to open up this header tag right here. And then if you go inside of the links right here, this div tag with the class of links, go into the nav tag. And then we want to go into the second div tag right here, go into this div tag with the class of dropdown wrapper, you can see we have our two button tags right here, our UL tag. And then inside of there, we have this li tag, the path to post and all posts. So that is this right there. And then what you want to do is you want to come and look at this li tag with that h4 tag of by topic. And this has a UL tag with these three LI tags, all with the class of dropdown sub item. And then we have our topics leak code path with the value of leak code, topics node.js path with the node.js value, and then the topics view press path 
with the value of ViewPress. So that is right here. So that is our drop down um, menu subgroup right here. All right. So your navbar should now have a by topic subgroup in the drop down menu containing these links for leak code, Node.js, and ViewPress. So to add more links to the by topic subgroup, all you need to do is add another element into the items array. All right, so all you'd have to do is come down here and you would just add another element right here if you wanted to add another link inside of that drop down menu subgroup. And then a quick reminder about the 404 when clicking the links. So clicking the links will show the 404 layout because we haven't set up the pages for the navbar links except for the home page. But in a future tutorial, we will create these pages which will fix these issues. So if you come over here and you click on one of these links, it's gonna give you that 404, all right? So now let's get on to how to disable the navbar. So you can disable the navbar globally if you prefer to not have a navbar for your site. So you also have the option to disable the navbar locally for specific pages as well. So we'll demonstrate how to do each of these below. So if you wanted to dis disable the navbar globally, then you wanna add the following to the config.js file. So right over here inside of theme config, um, instead of having this nav right here, you could just do this navbar and then you just give it this value of false. So the navbar property is a predefined variable provided by the default theme. And then you can check out predefined variables powered by default theme for a list of the predefined variables. So you can take a look at this documentation for more information about them. All right, so this is how you would disable the navbar locally for a specific page. So you can add the following to a page's front matter. So if you went to the front matter for a specific page, so say you went to the home page if you wanted to disable it there then all you would have to do inside of the yaml front matter block is to just set navbar and then do a colon and then give it a value of false all right so in this video we went over what a navbar is and then we took a look at the navbar logo and site title and then we took a look at navbar links so we took a look at internal links and then we took a look at external links then we took a look at drop down menus and then drop down menu subgroups. And then we took a look at how to disable the navbar both globally, so for the entire site, and then how to disable the navbar locally for a specific page. All right, now in the next video, we will begin the development of the footer component, which will stick to the bottom of the page and consist of social media icons and a made by message. All right, so that is this post right here. All right, so we will see you in the next video.